Hi there, this is uh, Dave from VideoFXUniverse.com and today's tutorial is in 3D Studio Max 9 where I'm going to be showing you how to add sh a shadow mat to a picture background. Alright, it's very very simple to do. Now, uh, if you've ever had a scene where you, you um, needed a very realistic looking background but you, um, you, you can't afford to buy the models um, of, of a scenery or a landscape or you don't have the time to create one, I'll show you how you can trick giving the impression that you're in a background without actually uh, making one, so to speak. So for instance, um, what I'm going to do is go up to my rendering, environment, and I'm going to add an environment map. I'm going to click on this, uh, bitmap, and I'm going to try and find it on my PC. Now I've got one in here. It's, uh, plate. Okay. Make sure that your use map is um, highlighted. Okay. Now in your viewport, right click and show background. Okay. As you can see, if I just uh, render this out, I just have a picture of um, like a woodland path type thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, bring an object in. So I'm just going to create a sphere. Uh, just drag that in. Okay, position it correctly. Let's just scale it down a little bit. Now, as you can see from the background, it looks like it's um, on the background itself, uh, sitting on the floor. But if I render this out, you'll see that it actually isn't. As you can see there, it's just, just kind of floating. It doesn't look very realistic at all. However, this is where we um, come in with our little um, shadow mat. So what we're going to do now is create a plane. Drag it in on the top viewport. Okay, it can be quite big. Now, the idea of this is what we want to do is line it up with the background. Now, if I just turn that so it looks like there. Actually, no, if I just scale up a bit more. Okay, now turn it. Okay, now bring it down so that it lines up with here with the ground here so make sure it's all lined up properly so it looks like it's just sitting there now we press M to bring up our material properties select an empty sphere and on this standard button click it and then you want to select matte shadow okay select OK now you hot you click it to the um, the plane apply it to the plane now as you can see you can only see half of the background right now what we want to do is position the um, the sphere so it's sitting right on it. Okay. Right. Now this won't actually do anything until we add some lights into the scene. Right. Okay. So if I select my lights, what I want to do first is select a skylight. Okay. Into the top viewport. Now with a skylight, okay, this sends out global illumination. So if you've got a, um, a spotlight going in one direction, it won't be dark on the opposite side. It'll just give global illumination. Now what you don't want to do is is uh, have a um, shadow set up on this. So ov obviously with here, uh, where are we? Yeah, You don't want to select the shadows because with the shadows um, you, you will get excellent results in your scene but the problem is that um, it will take absolutely ages to render a single scene. Okay, so a single frame can take, um, depending on how complex your scene is, um, a single frame can take anywhere between five to five minutes to an hour. Okay, so don't select the cast shadows on this. Now what we want to do is bring in another light. I'm going to bring in a target spotlight. Okay, and just drag that in. Okay, and I'm going to select ray traced shadows. Okay, now bring the intensity down slightly to 0.7, and with this, um, I'm going to bring this one down to where are we? Uh, I'm bring this, bring this down to about 0.4. Okay, right, just 
change the position of the um, the light here and bring it up and what I might do as well is bring it over slightly okay now this is where the magic works if I just render this out you'll see a significant difference from the very first time I rendered this and there you go the sphere now looks like it's actually in the scene with its own shadow okay and obviously you can adjust the um, the shadow softness as well so that it's not as dark and it actually blends into the um, the scene very well so obviously if the shadows in the background are very very um, um, like faint then you want to make your shadows look the same so click on the shadow pr parameters and I'll bring it down to 0.7 okay and I'm going to render this out again and it basically thins out the shadow slightly and there you go basically now what you have is a sphere on a um, image background that actually looks like it's on the ground it's actually in the scene it's very very simple and as you can see I've just, just, just proved that it has um, really really good effects and obviously you can change the shadow to suit your needs I'll, I'll show you the shadow map and I'll render this one again and um, changing the shadow parameters um, can drastically alter your scene as you can see this looks a hell of a lot more softer than it was before okay but the key things that you need to be aware of when doing this is check your background see where the shadows are uh, pointing and basically adjust your lights to suit where the shadow will be casted okay because um, obviously if the background shadow is pointing one way and your shadow is pointing another it just will not look right at all and uh, basically that is the tutorial okay so you don't need to spend loads and loads of money um, buying expensive um, 3D backgrounds or sceneries just go onto Google find an image background and use it as a um, as, as a mat and like I say all we're using for the shadow is a ground plane with um, this um, matte shadow option selected rather than an actual um, colour or a bitmap very very simple and that's basically the tutorial okay my name's Dave from videoeffectsuniverse.com please come onto the site check out the other tutorials join the forum and uh, I will speak to you soon bye